Bruch Maboyim. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. Um, this week, again, we're continuing with what started last week, which was the introduction to the priestly blessing. And we're right before the holidays, so uh, we'll continue now with the uh, priestly blessing and the second lecture, which will be on the blessing itself. Uh, we are about to enter into the holiday season with Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret, uh, and Simchas Torah. Sometime during the prayer service of these special occasions, we will hopefully be blessed by the Kohanim, by the priests. The ritual that we refer to as Duchanan. So let us examine the words of the prayer in the hope that we can connect to all the blessings that God, our Father, has set aside for us. Now, the priestly blessing is found in the book of Numbers, um, and it is broken up into three verses. The first verse reads, first verse reads, Yivarecha Hashem v'yishmarecha, may God bless you and guard you. The second verse reads, Yair Hashem panabelecha v'chuneka, may God make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. And the third verse reads, Yisa Hashem Panabelacha Vyasem Lacha Shalom. May God lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. That is the priestly blessing, those three verses. So let's look deeply into these verses and see what we can learn. Now the first verse begins with the Hebrew word Yivarechacha, a blessing, and ends with the Hebrew word Yishmarecha, guard you. Now the first part of the blessing we say is for material success. However, wealth comes with many difficulties and dangers. It's not free. These challenges exist both in the outside world that wants to take away one's wealth, and also from within a person themselves being tempted to use their wealth in ways that are not spiritually productive, uh, drawing them away from a life of Torah and mitzvot. One should view their wealth in, in, real, in a proper perspective, the priestly blessing begins with wealth, because as it states in Pirkei Avot, "Im ein kemach ein Torah." If there's no flower, then there is no Torah. Practical. So the blessing ends with the word "guarding," which makes the blessing actually complete. It tells us that not only will God Almighty grant us material blessings, but that He is also the one that will guard it for us. Now the Magad of Dubno gives a parable to help us better understand this idea. There was a wealthy man who had a large family and he wanted to take them all along on a long ocean voyage. He discovered that it would be uh, too expensive to bring along all of his servants. So he decided that the family would travel without any servants and they would take care of their own needs. He had one son who was an excellent chef uh, but he really didn't get along well with his other siblings. So the father was concerned that though his son would cook, he may only cook for himself and not for the rest of the family. So what he did was he had his servants pack only the biggest pots and pans, leaving all the smaller ones at home. This would force the son, who was the chef, to cook larger amounts of food rather than only enough for himself. So too God has given some of us more bounty than we really need. He has done so in the hope that we will share our blessing with those that are in need of some assistance based on Pneum Torah. Now the first verse of the priestly blessing consists of three words which allude to the three forefathers. The priestly blessing is introduced with the Hebrew word ko, so, which has a numerical value, the matri of 25. The word ko is mentioned in the Torah with each of the forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And the gematria of the Hebrew word kohen is 75, which is exactly three times the numerical value of the word ko. So each one of these three verses allude to one of the patriarchs. The first verse alludes to Avram, Abraham, our father. This verse is a blessing for material success, a blessing for wealth, and even more so an assurance that God, and not an angel, will be the one to protect us from all the challenges that money creates. Arrogance, pride, greed, jealousy, etc. This blessing is written in the singular to tell us 
The most important trait that one can possess is unity. This was the level the nation reached when they all stood together as one to receive the Torah from God Almighty on Mount Sinai. Now this blessing connects with the first blessing of the Amida, the standing prayer, which ends with the Hebrew words, Magen Avram, the shield of Abraham. A blessing connected to kindness, since as we know, Avram Binu, Abraham our father, was the paradigm of kindness. It is also connected to the Hebrew word Magen, which is a shield, and a request that even after we sin, his merits should be a protection, again, for us constantly. When the Kohen blesses the congregation, he should do so with a, a loud voice. This would seem to go against what Shlomo Mela, King Solomon, said, that one should bless quietly. But why? The answer, because of the ayin hara, because of the evil eye. So aren't we concerned? The answer is no. Since it is God Almighty himself who is blessing us, therefore, there is really no fear or concern about the Ayin Hora, the evil eye. The Tantchuma states that first we ask God to bless us, Yivarecha, with sons, and then to protect us with daughters, Yishmarecha, since women need more protection. In addition, we ask that God should bless you, since a person doesn't really know how to bless, after all. How can we be certain as to what is good and what is bad? So the Kohen says, let God who knows what is truly good, let him bless you. We ask God to bless us just as he blessed Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, with bakol, which means with everything, based on a gracious rabbi. Now the first verse begins with the word, Yivarechacha, he shall bless you, which alludes to our Yetzir Tov, excuse me, our good inclination, which has a gematria of the Eitz Tov of 576. This verse ends, this, this verse ends with the word, Yishmarecha, and he should guard you, which alludes to our Eitz Sahara, our evil inclination, which has a numerical value of gematria of 575, one number less. We can view this gematria as a request that God should help us in our struggle in life, to be successful in our mission of following after our good inclination rather than our evil inclination. Also, the numbers 5 plus 7, 12 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. The numerical value of the Hebrew word chai, life. And the numbers 5, 7, 12, and then 5, 17 is the numerical value of the Hebrew word chet, which is sin. This is a request that God should bless us with life and protect us from sin, based on Shor Mor and the base Mordechai. Now the second verse alludes to Yitzchak, our father, who was able to see the divinity of God while he was bound as a sacrifice on the altar by his father of Ram at the Akedah. This verse also connects to the second blessing in the Amida, the standing prayer, Ato Gibor, you are mighty which is an allusion to what we call Tchiat HaMesim, the revival of the dead. In addition, there are five words in this verse, which is an allusion to the five books of the Torah. Now, the last word in this blessing is Vichoneka, and be gracious to you. The word Vichoneka is connected to the Hebrew word Chinam, free. All that God bestows upon us really are undeserved gifts. It is also connected to the Hebrew word Machaneh, camp, that God's presence should always be in your midst, based on the Tanzchuma. In addition, it connects to the word chinach, instruction. This is also a blessing for spirituality, a request for godly assistance in all of our Torah learning. I heard from uh, Daniel Keyes. We also see a connection to the holiday of Hanukkah. But Nachman of Breslov said that when a person observes the holiday of Hanukkah, he finds favor in God's eyes. Now the verse consists of five words and 20 letters, which alludes to Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, who entered the world after 20 generations and to who gave over to his son Yitzchok the five books of the Torah. Now the third blessing begins with the words, 
He saw Hashem panavei lecha biyosem lecha shalom. May God direct his countenance upon you and grant upon you peace. Rashi tells us that this is a request to God that he should withhold his anger from us. We also find that this third blessing brings together the first blessing for materialism and the second blessing for spirituality. You see, many times these two aspirations will conflict with one one another. Therefore, the necessity or the blessing of peace. So the third blessing is one of peace, a prayer, a request that the first two blessings should complement each other rather than compete. And now this can only be achieved when we connect ourselves to God, our Father in Heaven, since Ato Kadosh, you, God Almighty, are holy. This blessing alludes to Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov our Father, the third and most elevated of the forefathers. It also connects to the third blessing in the Amida, again, Ato Kadosh, you are holy. We read in the portion of Ayetze <clears throat> that Yaakov, while he was on his way to Lovan's house to find a wife, spends the night on the Temple Mount. There, he beseeches God that he should Vishavti Bishalom, that I will retur- return in peace. Now, there are seven words in this third uh, blessing, in the third verse, which alludes to the seven days of the week. It also alludes to the first verse in the Torah and portion of Bereshit, which means in the beginning. This verse has seven words. The seventh day of the week is the Shabbat. The seventh year of the planting cycle where we leave the fields fallow, what we refer to as the Shemitah. Seven Shemitah cycles, which bring about the Jubilee year, the 50th year. It is also an allusion to the seven heavens, seven hells, and the seven planets. Again, to also to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, who was the seventh shepherd of the world beginning with Adam, first man. It may also be seen as a way to counteract the seven names of the devil, of the Satan. Now the final blessing ends with the word Shalom, peace. Rav Nachman of Breslov states that the priestly blessing ends with the word Shalom, since peace is the one blessing that contains within it every blessing. The Sifra states that one may be blessed with prosperity, health, food, and drink. But if there's no peace, then it's all worthless. Therefore, these three blessings are all sealed with the gift of peace. Now, the first verse of the priestly blessing has 15 letters. The second verse has 20 letters. And the third verse has 25 letters. There's an increase of five letters between each of the verses. Now, the number five connects to the Hebrew letter He which alludes to God Almighty himself. The increase of five numbers between each of the verses is an allusion to the fact that God is the Lord of the past, the present, and the future, based on Rabbein Baha'i. These three verses were inscribed around Shlomo Melech's couch, King Solomon, as it states in Shira Shiram, which speaks about the couch with 60 valiant ones surrounding it. This verse does not really mean that there were literally 60 soldiers that stood around King Solomon's bed, but rather it alludes to the 60 letters that make up the priestly blessing. These 60 letters correspond to the names of God that were engraved around his couch. Also, just as a bed represents the first commandment given to mankind, the mitzvah of procreation, peru or revu, to be fruitful and multiply. So, too, the priestly blessing increases from 15 to 20 to 25, based on a Tan Tkuma. In addition, number 60 also corresponds to the 600,000 root souls that make up what we call Knesset Yisro, the children of Israel, based on the Mamelois. Now, the Kliyokar states that all three blessings begin with the Hebrew word Yud, which has a numerical value of 10. When we spell out the letter Yud, it is spelled Yud, the Matri of 10, Vav, the Gematri of 6, and Dalid, the Gematri of 4. If we add these three numbers up together, 10 plus 6 is 16, and 4, they equal 20, which is twice the number of 10. 
So we see that all the blessings and the priestly blessing are doubled, half for the body, which is revealed, and half for the soul, which is concealed. Now our sages tell us that there are three partners in the creation of a child, the father, the mother, and God Almighty himself. The father contributes five parts, which are all white, the bones, sinews, brain, fingernails, and the whites of the eyes. The mother contributes, again, five parts, which are all dark. They are the skin, meat, blood, hair, and the pupils of the eyes. God Almighty contributes ten parts, which are all spiritual. The spirit, the soul, facial expression, sight, hearing, speech, mobility, knowledge, understanding, and intellect. Now, all of these three 20 parts are blessed by the act of the Kohen, lifting his ten fingers up, those ten which are revealed and those ten which are concealed. So three yudin, three yuds, equal and 60, which is an allusion to the 60 letters that are present in this priestly blessing. Now we follow along with the Kohanim, the priests, as they repeat the words recited by the Chazan, the cantor. There are different customs as to which direction one should turn as they repeat each word. But all customs agree that for one to be included in the priestly blessing, one must be standing in front of the Kohanim, facing them. If you were to stand behind them while they officiate, you would not be included in their blessing. However, if for some, if someone was unable to attend services in the synagogue, they could still be included in the priestly blessing as long as they have a desire to do so. After each of the three blessings, the Chazan and the congregation respond with the Hebrew word Amen, true, so should it be. There are different customs as to what and when the congregation prays while the Kohanim bless the people. Now the Chabad Lubavitch custom is when the Kohanim repeat the last three words of the blessings, the Yosem, and may he grant l'cha to you shalom, peace. Then the congregation begins to read quietly to themselves. A paragraph that begins with the Hebrew words, Reboi Shalom, Master of the World. Now this paragraph is broken up into three parts, each corresponding to one of these three words. Each part is connected in some way to dreams. We ask God Almighty that all dreams dreamt whether by ourselves or by others, should only be for good. We also ask God that we be healed from all of our physical ailments and protected from all of our adversaries. Now, according to the custom of Chabad Lubavitch, as the Kohanim, as the priests repeat the last word, Shalom, peace, the congregation say the last three words in the paragraph, Tishmarani and guard me, and be gracious to me, Vatirtseni, and favor me. After the Kohanim finished the priestly blessing, they turn and face the ark. At this time, the congregation recites the paragraph, Adir Bamoron, which means mighty one on high. They recite these words while their talasim, while their talas are still covering their faces. At the same time, while the Chazan repeats the last prayer of the Amida, Sim Shalom, bestow peace, the Kohanim recite the paragraph, Reboi Shalom, Master of the Universe. The Kohanim should prolong the recital of this paragraph so that they will conclude their blessing in unison with the Chazan. This is done so that the congregation will answer Amen to both the blessing of the Kohanim and of the Chazan. Among Jews in Israel, except in the Galilee, and among most Sephardic Jews worldwide, the ceremony by the Kohanim is performed every day during the repetition of the Shacharit morning Amidah, the standing prayer. It is also recited during the Musaf additional Amidah, the standing prayer, uh, whenever applicable. On Yom Kippur, this blessing is recited during the fifth and last prayer of the day, the Ne'ilah service. It is recited then only by the Chazan without any chants or gestures. Also on fast days, other than Yom Kippur, 
If it is said late in the afternoon, it is recited only again by the Chazan during the Mincha service, the afternoon service, but again, without any chants or gestures. The reason given for permitting the recitation of the priestly blessing in the afternoon only on fast days is that since on these occasions, the Kohanim, the priests are fasting, that being the case, they cannot drink alcohol prior to the ceremony. As we learn in the Torah from the death of Nadav and Aviv, the two illustrious sons of Aaron, the high priest. They were consumed by a heavenly fire as a punishment for entering into the tabernacle to perform a service in a state of intoxication. Now in the diaspora and Ashkenazic Orthodox communities, as well as in some Sephardic communities, such as Spanish and Portuguese Jews, the priestly blessings are only performed six holidays out of the year. They are Pesach, Shvuot, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur. This Ashkenazic practice is based on a ruling by the Ramah, a 16th century commentary on the Code of Jewish Law. It was his opinion that the Kohanim were commanded to bless the people, but with joy, since the Kohanim in the diaspora could not be expected to feel such joy on a daily basis, they would not be allowed to duchen. The exception to this state of mind would be on the above mentioned holidays where all Jews are commanded to feel joy. Now the priestly blessing is recited daily in the morning standing prayer in the Amida when there is a minyan. It is said in, recita in the recitation of the Amida by the Chazan, but again without the chants or gestures. Now even though it is said daily when the Kohanim blessed the congregation on the holidays, somehow it is totally di a t totally different type of experience. There are certain Kohanim who may not bless the people. If a Kohen is guilty of desecrating his priesthood by contaminating himself to the dead or by marrying a woman forbidden to a Kohen, he may not preside. In addition, any male child born of these marriages does not have the status of a Kohen, and he, he too may not do him. However, if a Kohen is unscrupulous in the performance of mitzvot, other than conversion or bloodshed, or even if the people accuse him of being a sinner, he still may perform the ritual of blessing the people, and his blessing is valid. As I mentioned in the last my thought, this ancient prayer is our connection to our past, to the birth of the Jewish nation in the desert, and the blessing bestowed upon them by Aaron, the high priest, and his sons. It is our hope, it is our prayer, that it may also lead us into our future with all the blessings and goodness that God can provide with the coming of Mashiach Zekenu now. I want to thank you for listening and attending. Um, again, it's New Year. Let me bless all of you with the Shana Tov Matuka. You should have a sweet year, a happy year, a successful year in all ways with revealed good. And it may be a year again of the coming of Mashiach where the whole world finally finds peace uh, instead of the confusion that we seem to be going through. God should bless you all again. Thank you for attending.